السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم فرام ٹو نائٹ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو بی ان شاء اللہ تعالیٰ اسٹڈین دی فرسٹ سیونٹین ورسز آف سگال بکارا وی اسٹارٹیڈ دس سیریز آف قرآن کلاس وتھ سور الفاتحہ وی اسٹڈیڈ دی ورڈ فار ورڈ ٹرانسلیشن of all the seven verses we looked at every single word every single root that appears in surah al-fatiha we also looked at the detailed commentary of surah al-fatiha we covered many aspects of it and today we're starting surah al-baqarah the first 17 verses of surah al-baqarah before we delve deeper into the discussion of the roots and the tafsir and the uh, you know the underlying meanings and the context and the history of surah al-baqarah it is befitting that we start tonight's class with the recitation of these verses uh, tonight i'm not going to recite all 17 verses rather i will uh, restrict myself to reciting only the first eight verses of surah al-baqarah we chat as follows الف لا ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة تو 
جلدی سے اردو زبان میں بھی پہلی آٹھ آیات کا ترجمہ میں پڑھ کے سنا دیتا ہوں اس کے بعد جو لفظی ترجمہ ہے ان آٹھ آیات کا ان کو دیکھیں گے اللہ کے نام کے ساتھ جو بے انتہا رحم کرنے والا بن مانگے دینے والا اور بار بار رحم کرنے والا ہے الف لامی اس کا مطلب ہے ان اللہ عالم ہو یعنی میں اللہ سب سے زیادہ جاننے والا ہوں یہ وہ کتاب ہے اس میں کوئی شک نہیں ہدایت دینے والی ہے متقیوں کو جو لوگ اب یہاں پہ متقیوں کا ذکر ہے کہ متقی ہے کون جو لوگ غیب پر ایمان لاتے ہیں اور نماز کو قائم کرتے ہیں اور جو کچھ ہم انہیں رزق دیتے ہیں اس میں سے وہ خرچ کرتے ہیں اور وہ لوگ جو اس پر ایمان لاتے ہیں جو تیری طرف یعنی رسول کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی طرف اتارا گیا اور اس پر بھی جو تجھ سے پہلے اتارا گیا اور وہ آخرت یعنی بعد میں آنے والی وہی پر بھی یقین رکھتے ہیں یہی وہ لوگ ہیں جو اپنے رب کی طرف سے ہدایت پر قائم ہیں اور یہی ہیں وہ جو فلاح پانے والے ہیں یقیناً وہ لوگ جنہوں نے کفر کیا اس حال میں کہ برابر ہے ان پر خاتو انہیں ڈرائے یا نہ ڈرائے وہ ایمان نہیں لائیں گے اللہ نے ان کے دلوں پر مہر لگا دی ہے اور ان کی شنوائی پر بھی اور ان کی آنکھوں پر پردہ ہے اور ان کے لیے بڑا عذاب مقدر ہے بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم بسم means in the name Allah is Allah الرحمن the most gracious الرحیم the ever merciful Alif, Lam, Mi now these in Arabic language are called مقتعات abbreviations and Alif is a short form of something Lam is a short form for something Mi is a short form for something Alif is taken from the Arabic word Ana Ana means I so from Ana the Alif is taken the Lam which appears next is taken from Allah so from Allah the letter Lam is taken and then we have Meen from A'alamu, A'alamu means I know the most or I know the best or I know everything I am the one who knows the most or I am the one who knows everything so A'alamu from there Allah the Almighty took Meen hence Alif La Meen means Anallahu A'alamu I am Allah all knowing Zalika, that, something which is at a distance, uh, is represented by Zalika in Arabic language. But sometimes when something is very high in its stature and its importance, the word Zalika could also be used for that. Here, in order to signify the importance of the prayer which was asked in Surah Al-Fatiha, wherein we are taught, Ehdina Salat al mustaqim guide us on the right path. This prayer was made in Surah Al-Fatiha. Then as a result of that prayer, Surah Al-Baqarah was revealed or Quran was revealed. And here Allah the Almighty says, Zalik Al-Kitab, that guidance which you were seeking in the form of Surah Al-Fatiha, this is that guidance. Zalika, that Al-Kitab, book, La Raybafi. It is that book or this is that book which you were asking for. La Rebafi. La means no, rab, doubt. Fihi in it. La Rebafi. There is no doubt in it. Meaning there is nothing which is doubtful in it. Hudan means guidance. Hidayat. Lil Muttaqi. Lil Muttaqi means, Muttaqi means righteous people. And Lil Muttaqi means for the righteous people. Zalik al Kitabu. This is that book, there is no doubt in it. It is a source of guidance for those who are righteous people. Alladina, who are those righteous people? Now Allah is explaining. Alladina, those yubinuna who believe bil ghaybi in the unseen. Wa yukimuna and they establish as salata. Salat means prayer. Or in Urdu we say namaz. Vamimma and from that razak nahum we have provided them yunfikun they spend. Which means Allah dina yuminuna bil ghaybi wa yukimuna salata vamimma razak nahum yunfikun. 
The righteous people are those who believe in that which is unseen, which they have not seen with their eyes yet. And they also establish the Salat and whatever we have provided them, they spend in our way from that. Walladina, wow here means and, alladina, those, yubiduna, and those who believe, bima, in that, unzila ilayka, unzila means it was sent down or it was revealed, ilayka, towards you. Here, it is a reference towards the revelation which was sent on Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Vama and that, unzila min kablika, which was revealed before you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa bil akhirati hum yuqinun. And they also believe or they also have firm faith, they have yaqeen in that which is yet to come. The context tells us that the akhirah here does not refer to the day of judgment, but rather to the revelation which is yet to come. Ulaika, these, ala hudam, these are the people, ala upon hudam, again means hidayat, that these are the people who are on the right path, or these are the people who are on guidance. Min rabbihim, min from rabbihim, rabb is Lord, him there. Ulaika ala hudam min rabbihim, these are the people who are upon the guidance that they have received from their Lord. Va'ulaika, and it is they, hum al muflihun, hum means they, al muflihun, those who are successful or those who shall prosper. So, those who believe in all those things which Allah just mentioned, these are the people who are ultimately going to be uh, successful in every single sense of the word. Inna ladina, inna means surely, alladina those, inna ladina surely those. Kafaru, who disbelieved. Sabaun alayhim, it is equal to them. Sabaun, equal, alayhim, on them. It is equal upon them, or it is equal for them, or it is equal to them. Anzartahum, whether you want, a means, a is basically a question mark. So, a anzartahum, whether you warn them, amlam tunzirhum, or you do not warn them. Am means uh, or lam means don't. Tunzir hum, you warn them. Am lam tunzir hum, or you do not warn them. La yubinu. La means no. Yubinu, they believe. La yubinu, they will not believe. So, surely those people who have disbelieved, it is equal to them. Whether you warn them or you do not warn them, these are the people who are not going to believe. Khatam Allahu. Khatama means he placed a stamp. He placed a seal. Seal is another word for a stamp. Khatam Allahu ala kulubihim. Khatam Allahu, Allah placed a stamp or a seal. Allah upon kulubihim, their hearts. Kulub is the plural of qalb. Qalb means heart. Kulub means hearts. So, Allah has placed a seal or a stamp on their hearts وَعَلَى سَمْعِهِمْ and also upon their hearing. Sam'a in Arabic means hearing and سَمْعِهِمْ uh, means their hearing. So, Allah has placed a seal on their hearts and also on their ears or on their sense of hearing. وَعَلَى أَبْصَارِهِمْ and on their eyes Absar is the plural of Basar Basar means eye, absar, eyes. Wa ala absarihim and on their eyes, ghishaba. Ghishaba means covering. In other words, their eyes are blindfolded. Walahum and for them, adabu nazim is a great punishment. So this is the word for word um, translation for these first eight verses of uh, Surah Al-Baqarah. I will not go into the uh, split word translation in Urdu language. I have already given the uh, translation in Urdu as is. Now without further ado, I quickly want to get into some historical background of Surah Al-Baqarah. Inshallah, in our next class, we will start the discussion on the roots 
and the subject matter. But before that, uh, we need to have the background information on Surah Al-Baqarah. Just like every Surah was revealed by Allah the Almighty, similarly, the names of each Surah were also revealed by Allah the Almighty to the Holy Prophet In other words, the name Al-Baqarah, which means a calf or a cow, was actually revealed to Holy Prophet uh, because of the subject matter of this Surah. Because there is an incident related to a calf which sort of becomes the central theme. Hence, that word was used by Allah the Almighty to name this Surah. This Surah was revealed or the revelation of the Surah started in the 14th year of the Hijrah. Which means soon after Holy Prophet ﷺ migrated to Medina, Surah Al-Baqarah started to be sent down to Holy Prophet ﷺ. And the revelation used to come down in a very slow pace. Very slow pace. If you were to take all the number of days that Holy Prophet ﷺ was a prophet of Allah the Almighty from the age of 40 till 63 when he passed away. And you take the number of words, the total number of words of the Holy Quran. And you take these, this number and divide it by the total number of days that Holy Prophet ﷺ was a prophet. You get the average you know, of certain number of words that were revealed to Holy Prophet ﷺ every day. On an average, that number is around 9 or 10. So 9 or 10 words were revealed per day. Imagine 9 or 10 words, not sentences. 9 or 10 words, that's super slow. Allah the Almighty took his time sending down the revelation of the Holy Quran. So when we talk about Surah Al-Baqarah, the revelation of Surah Al-Baqarah started soon after the migration to Padina and it ended just before the passing away of the Holy Prophet around the time of Hijrat al -Bida. And the last verse, the last verse of Surah Al-Baqarah which was revealed on Holy Prophet is not the final verse that we read in Surah Al-Baqarah which is La Yukallifu Allahu Nafsan Rather it was verse number 39 of the Holy Quran which is Qul nahbitu minha jamia fa imma yatiyannakum minni hudan fa man tabi'a hudaya fa la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yazanun which is that uh, we said go forth all of you from here and if there comes to you guidance from me then whoso shall follow my guidance on them shall come no fear nor shall they grieve. This was the final verse from Surah Al-Baqarah which was revealed to Holy Prophet Sallallahu and this was revealed just a few months before the demise of Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now we believe that every surah is connected with the following surah or the preceding surah. The Orientalists meaning the Western scholars who have, uh, you know, criticized Qur'an. They say that there is no specific order in the Qur'an. They say that it's out of order. And then at the same time, they say that the way Qur'an is organized is that you have the longest surahs first and the shorter surahs later. And they give the example that, look, you have Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Nisa. Surah Al Imran, Surah Nisa, Surah Maida, Surah Al Anam, Araf, so on and so forth in the beginning. And you have Surah Al Ikhlas, you have Surah Qasr, you have Surah Al Falak, Surah Al Nas. These are the shorter chapters. And they say, look, you have these shorter chapters towards the end. And they say that maybe this is the order. But even this logic, so called logic by them, is in itself very faulty. If the longest surah is to be the first surah, then Surah Baqarah should have been the first surah and not Surah al fatiha Surah fatiha happens to be one of the shortest chapters of the Quran with only seven verses. So it definitely shows that whatever the Orientalists were thinking is wrong. This is not the order in which the Quran is, that you have the longest surahs first and then the shorter surahs afterwards. Rather, the way Quran is organized is completely different. And the way Quran is organized is according to the subject matter. 
the subject matter of Surah Fatiha is connected to the subject matter of Surah Al-Baqarah. The subject matter of Surah Al-Baqarah is connected to the next Surah which is Surah al Imran. So it is connected through and through. Not only that, but we believe that every single verse of the Quran is connected to the previous verse and the next verse. They are not out of place. Surah Holy Prophet has mentioned that the summary of the entire Quran is Surah al fatiha In the entire Quran we find laws related to property, inheritance, uh, the laws pertaining to punishments which are called Tazirat. Then we have the laws related to financial dealings. We have you know, the do's and the don'ts. We have how to reach Allah, matters related to spirituality, matters related to economics, matter related to uh, social peace, justice, so on and so forth. So many themes are, uh, are uh, mentioned in the Quran, the prophecies as well. And the summary of all of the entire Quran is basically the seven verses of Surah Al-Fatiha. And Surah Fatiha is then further expounded, the subject matter of Surah Fatiha is then expounded in Surah Al-Baqarah. Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu mentioned Everything has its climax, everything has its apex, its peak. You know, like mountains have their peak. Similarly, Quran has its peak as well. And the peak of the Quran is Surah Al-Baqarah. And then in another hadith, Holy Prophet mentioned that in it, meaning in Surah Al-Baqarah, there is one verse which is the commander of all the verses, or the supreme verse which rules all the verses of the Holy Quran. And that one verse is Ayat al-Kursi. Then the Holy Prophet وسلم, while talking about the fazilat of Surah al-Baqarah, the excellences of Surah al-Baqarah, he mentioned that a household where Surah al-Baqarah is recited daily, Satan does not enter that household. Then in another narration, Holy Prophet وسلم, mentioned, this is taken from Surah al-Darmi, uh, he says that whoever recites the 10 verses of Surah Al-Baqarah, the first four, then Ayat Al-Kursi and the two verses that come after it, and then the last three verses, which start from Lillahi ma fis samawati wa ma So whoever recites these 10 verses every day, Satan will not enter that household. In other words, we should all memorize these verses and recite them daily in our homes, in our sunnah prayers, in our nawafil prayers, so on and so forth. It is also narrated that once the Holy Prophet wanted to send a, an army of Muslims for uh, an expedition and he wanted to appoint somebody as a commander-in-chief of that army. So he started interviewing different individuals and in the middle of the interview he would ask them how much of the Quran have they memorized until the Holy Prophet saw one young man whom he interviewed and asked him, what have you memorized? So this man replied that, Huzur, I have memorized such and such surahs from the Quran and also I have memorized Surah Al-Baqarah. At this, the Holy Prophet showed his uh, am amazement that, really, you have memorized Surah Al-Baqarah? And then, Holy Prophet appointed this young man versus other seniors who were also present. Holy Prophet appointed this young man as the leader of this great army, of this, you know, uh, expedition. From the Muslim side, this young man was appointed as the leader. One of the reasons was that Surah Al-Baqarah has many of the do's and the don'ts and the commandments which are recorded in the Holy Quran. Uh, Hazrat Ibn Arabi, Rahmatullah alayhi, used to say that his teacher taught him that there are thousand do's and don'ts in Surah Al-Baqarah. Now whether this number is exaggerated or not is irrelevant to the discussion we're having. But the main point is that Surah Al-Baqarah has many commandments, many instructions related to Sharia and different matters, related to Fiqh, related to Tazirat, so on and so forth. So, Whoever was made, back in those days, whoever was made as the chief of the army or the commander of the army, 
was also appointed as the Imam al-Salat, that he would be actually the person who would lead the army when it would be time for prayers. And whoever was Imam al-Salat would be the same person whom people would come and ask different questions related to fiqh, related to jurisprudence, related to different matters of Sharia. So someone who had memorized Surah Al-Baqarah, it was considered as if he is a scholar of the Quran, a scholar of the Sharia. Now, when Hazrat Muslim sat down to write the commentary of Surah Al-Baqarah, he wrote that 27 years before, meaning 27 years before he started writing down the tafsir of Surah Al-Baqarah, one day he was teaching um, Surah Al-Baqarah to some students of his. And when he reached verse number 130 of Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah the Almighty put this in his heart. That verse number 130, 130, 130, is the key to understand the order in which Surah Al-Baqarah is. So, I looked up 130 verse number from Surah Al-Baqarah. The verse number 130 is as follows. Rabbana wabas fihim rasulam minhum yatlu alayhim ayatika wa yuallimuhum al-kitaba wal hikmata wa yuzakihim innaka anta azizul hakim This is the prayer that Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam made for the people of Makkah when he was when he laid the foundation to the city of Makkah with his son Hazrat Ismail this was the prayer he made. And our Lord raised among them a messenger from among themselves who may recite to them your signs and teach them the book and wisdom and may he purify them. Surely you are the mighty, you are the wise. So Hazrat Muslim the second color to the promised Messiah Islam was revealed by Allah the Almighty that if you want to understand the order in which Surah Al-Baqarah is, this verse is the key. Ye ayat chabi hai Surah Al-Baqarah ke mazmoon ko samajhne ki. There are four things mentioned in this verse. A prophet who comes and performs four things. The very first thing is yatlu alayhim ayatika that he recites the signs of Allah Ta'ala upon those people. Number two, he teaches them the book of Allah. Number three, and he teaches them guidance, uh, wisdom, and that he purifies them. Now, Hazrat Muslim figured out that Surah Al-Baqarah can be divided into four parts. The first part uh, would cover Primarily, the subject of the ayat of Allah, signs of Allah Ta'ala, ayat means signs. The second portion of Surah Al-Baqarah is that which deals with the commandments, which are called the do's and the don'ts of the Sharia, matters related to Sharia, hence yu'allimuhum al-kitab. The third segment is wal-hikmah, hikmah means wisdom, so matters related to wisdom are then outlined. And then the final portion is Yuzakim, that he purifies them. This contains those prayers that when recited, purifies one's heart and soul. Hazrat Muslim actually gave the number of rukus that fall under the first section, then the number of rukus which fall under the second section, and then the third and then the fourth. And this, is, this verse is the key to understand the subject matter. Uh, of Surah Al-Baqarah. Here I am going to end tonight's Quran class and inshallah we will uh, start with the actual subject matter of Surah Al-Baqarah from our uh, next Holy Quran class which will be inshallah next Tuesday.